Back working on my aunt's kitchen build, let's retrofit this space into a beverage nook. Hey guys, how's it going? Like I mentioned in the previous video, one of the things my aunt wanted for her kitchen renovation was to replace the wall-mounted oven with this standard floor model. This left a bit of a weird space behind where the old oven was, as the remaining surface was way below a normal countertop height. Basically all I need to do here is to build a small add-on that can sit over top of the existing surface. That will bring it up to regular countertop height. So to start this part of the project off, I again start with unloading the old cabinets from the truck and disassembling them for potential salvage and reuse. I decided that while I was still in salvage mode, I could start working on the countertop first since this still needed a bit of work. With a pry bar, I started to attack the laminate veneer, but noticed it was starting to pull out chunks of plywood as well, which I didn't want. Luckily, I remembered that I had picked up a heat gun at a garage sale the day before, so I broke that out and after blasting the countertop with that, the adhesive loosened up and the laminate came off a lot easier, and with a lot less damage to the plywood. With the laminate removed, I broke out the random orbit sander with an 80 grit disc and removed the remaining adhesive. Then gave it a once over with 120 grit just to smooth it out a bit more. Then I set it off to the side for a while since at the moment I am nowhere near needing a countertop. Now onto the cabinet carcass, I raid my scrap pile for suitable material and cut it to size at the table saw. Since this carcass is going to be concealed on basically all sides once it is completed, I can use some of the, I'll say, less visually appealing pieces. With everything cut to size, I set up my pocket hole jig and jig out a couple of pocket holes. With jigging of pocket holes out of the way, it's time for assembly with glue and, shockingly enough, pocket hole screws. Even using the correct length this time. So, you might have noticed a bit of a discrepancy between the countertop and this carcass. Hopefully it makes more sense now. To attach these two half carcasses, I just lined up the two sides, clamped them together, and screwed them together. I decided to go about it this way because I needed the center divider to be a little bit thicker. I could have just built it as one unit, glued up a center panel out of two sheets of plywood and notched out the corners. Six in one, half dozen in the other. With the two half carcasses screwed together, I set the countertop down and try to align it to the carcass. After I realized that the edge I was trying to align to was not square, I squared up with a straight edge and cut it square with a circular saw. Now that aligning everything is working out a lot better, I mark out the cut line and rip it to length at the table saw. To fill in the bottom of the countertop I need filled, I rip some scrap plywood into strips and glue and pin nail them into place. With that done, I turn my attention to the damage I did to the top. I had about a half a tube of wood filler left over from a previous project, so I just filled all of the damaged spots on the surface with that and level it out with a putty knife. I guess I didn't necessarily need to use wood filler, drywall plaster would have worked just as well. With the wood filler dried and sanded, I aligned the countertop to the carcass and screwed down the countertop. Then I broke out the number 4 hand plane and flushed up the countertop edge with the sides of the carcass. Since this cabinet is being installed as a retrofit into an existing cabinet, I decided to hold off on the face frame to build it on site. So it's onto the drawers. To kick the drawer slides out past the eventual face frames, I glued a couple strips of plywood together as a spacer and glued and pin nailed that to the interior sides of the carcass and then screwed on the drawer slides. I initially just attached the drawer slides directly to the center panel, though at some point I did add spacers to the center panel as well. Not sure when though. To build the drawers, I ripped some plywood to width over at the table saw and cut to length at the miter saw. Back at the table saw, I set the fence and blade to rip a dado into the bottom of the drawer side panels and the bottom, right, and left of the drawer front and back panels. With the drawer dry fit, I measure for the bottom panel and cut it to size. Then with some glue and pin nails, I have two big drawer boxes. Bet you you're thinking I'm going to show you putting the drawer slides on the drawers now. You'd be wrong. I don't remember why, but I opted to hold off installing the drawers for the moment. So at this point, I'm pretty much done with what I can do in my shop, so it's time to load up everything and head out for install. Now that I'm over at my aunt's place, I mark out the height of the cabinet retrofit on both sides of the cabinet cavity, and with my pull saw and a square, I cut out the old face frame backer so that I can properly fit the cabinet into the cavity, and knocked it out with hammer and pry bar. After cutting the face frame backer, my brother, who stopped by to see how things were going, gave me a hand to load the cabinet into place, which was somewhat successful. The cabinet brace was still in the way and preventing me from pushing the cabinet all the way back, so I just cut it out with my oscillating saw. This wasn't going to be needed anymore since the retrofit cabinet will take over that function once I screw it into the sides. 
With the cabinet now set in place, I screw the cabinet into the cavity to secure it down. Now that the cabinet is secured, I finally get the drawers installed. And now it's time for the face frame. Out on the patio where I had my uncle's job site table saw set up, I pull off the blade guard and the riving knife. Definitely not recommended, but this saw is by far on the weaker side of the spectrum. And to make life easier, I ripped the oak into strips with the pass with the blade at half depth, flip the board end for end, and run it through again. With the boards ripped to width, I unpack my job site workbench and plunk my thickness planer down on top of it, and plane the boards to the same thickness as the rest of the face frames. To take care of the burning on the edges and mill the boards to final dimensions, I ran them through vertically as well. With the milling done, the planer packed away, and the workbench usable again, I clamped down one of the boards and cut a notch out of it to fit around the countertop with my oscillating saw. Cleaned up the cut with a chisel and attached the board to the cabinet with some pin nails, while my brother made sure that the other side was clear of staples for the next board to go up. I realized that I ended up building the drawers a little bit too tall, so I marked out the face frame with a half inch extra and cut off the extra at the table saw. Then they were good to go and with that the rest of the face frame went up without a hitch. Off camera I took the router with a 1 8 round over bit to soften the edges and since my aunt is taking care of the finishing herself, with that I'm going to call this portion of the project done for now. This is part 3 of a multi-part project. There are a few more cabinets that I built as well as some cope and stick or rail and style, whichever it is, raised panel doors for the cabinets. The last video in this project will be coming out in the next few weeks where you will be able to see me put the final touches on all of the cabinetry. And if you have no idea what other cabinetry I am referring to, there is a link to the playlist for the rest of the project up here as well. So with that, thank you all for watching and if you like what I'm doing here, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more. If you have any questions or comments, I look forward to reading them in the comment section below. And if you want to see more up-to-date projects, you can follow me on Instagram at John the Shriner. Otherwise, I hope to see you in the next video and have a good one.